Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin. And today is another episode in the 5-Minute Logic Expert Series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. This series is going to be perfect for you if you're a beginner, but even if you've been working in Logic for a long time, it's really going to help you out as well. There's going to be all sorts of nuggets. You're going to be like, hey, I didn't know that you could do that. That's great. This is going to help my mix. I promise you it's going to be worth it, so stick with me. And today we're answering an age-old question, which is how loud should you record? This is a really, really important question to understand because if you get it wrong, you can't always fix it later. So it's important that you are paying attention to this because you got to get it right in the recording stage. Now, there's two sides to this. The first side is not clipping. That is the most important thing. We're going to talk about that and look at that more in just a second. The second side is making sure that you're recording kind of in the digital sweet spot where your plugins are expecting to receive volume. If you record too loud, that's going to be a problem even if you aren't clipping. And if you're recording too quietly, it's going to be a problem because your plugins aren't going to work properly. They're not going to be able to do what you need them to do. So you want to live in that digital sweet spot. Now, as I said, you cannot clip. That is most important because you cannot fix that later. If you clip, what happens is the signal's too hot. We have this point called digital zero. And if we go past digital zero, if our signal's too loud, the computer just cuts it off. You just lose that. And all of that gets lost and it sounds bad. It does this weird kind of like paper crinkling thing. It's just nasty and you cannot get that sound back. You just lose that. So you want to record below digital zero. Keep that headroom there. That's what we're talking about. Digital zero. We have headroom here and then that's the loudest point here. That's your peak volume. So it's really important to avoid digital zero and not getting let anything get cut off. But the thing that I miss for a long time is that you also don't want to record too quietly. Now, you can always turn it up later. So as I said, you have to record below clipping, but you can turn up the volume later. But it's nice to not have to turn up the volume later. And if you're working with something like a virtual amp, it's important that you're hearing that virtual amp the way that you want to, which is another reason that it helps, again, to live in that digital sweet spot where you're recording loud enough to hear the virtual amp or whatever it is the way that you want to. It also really matters for things like compressor plugins, dynamic EQs, anything like that that's processing the audio. It typically needs some amount of signal, a healthy signal to come in before it's going to work the way that's supposed to, which is why having that lower amount set is helpful. Now, the nice thing is we can look at this very easily in Logic with a stock plugin. If we go up here under plugins and go down to metering, pull up your level meter. And this is great because it allows us to look at two things at once that give us information that helps us with both sides of this, making sure that we're not peaking and making sure that we're not necessarily recording too quiet either. Peak is tricky because it's momentary. So you could have something that just happens in a second that's really loud, but then your actual recording volume on average is very, very quiet. So you gotta make sure the peak never clips, but you wanna make sure that your average is sitting around something that the digital sweet spot is expecting. So. What I like with this plugin is that I can switch it here to peak and RMS. Now, if you've followed me for any amount of time or if you ever heard about VU meters, RMS is very, very similar to a VU meter. A VU meter is emulating something that exists in the real world where they had these needles that just kind of moved slowly because of the weight of the mechanism in them, or that, at least that's what I understand about them. Obviously, in the digital world, we're not limited to something like the weight of a mechanism. Uh, RMS is looking at something similar. What happened with the VU meter is that it would move slowly and so it would measure the average volume over time. It wasn't super accurate and couldn't pick out the exact peaks, but it would give you an average over time that we found is very similar to how we hear with our ears. Our ears aren't super good at picking out short peaks. So uh, something that's measuring the average volume is going to be better for getting that digital sweet spot for making sure you're recording loud enough. So think about this as making sure you're not recording too loud, making sure that you're recording loud enough. Now, let's focus on the peak meter because that is first and foremost. With our peak meter, we want to make sure that we're nowhere near zero. So if we look at this guitar signal here, let's look at the volume that we have. You can see the peak is negative 4.9, 4.6. Going to the latter section, we're still safely below zero, right? We know that at 4.6, it would be kind of hard to get all the way up to zero. Now, you want to test this. As you're setting your recording level, you want to really kind of drive it and see if you can get up to a level where all of a sudden you're peaking. And as long as you can't, then you're golden. You're all good. Uh, now, the second number that we're looking at is this RMS number. Now, on a VU meter, VU meters are calibrated to negative 18, uh, so you're looking for it to be zero. 
RMS is a little bit different. So typically you're looking for it to be around negative 22-ish, uh, and that can ebb and flow. This isn't a hard thing. The peak meter, you cannot go past zero or it's gonna be cut off. But with uh, the lower number, the RMS number, around negative 20-ish is what I'm looking for. So it's okay if it's a little bit below that, a little bit above that, but if you're at like negative 40, you're probably recording a little bit too quiet and you need to turn it up a little bit. And again, this number is measuring over a short period of time. So if you have something that's really, really spiky, like a drum hit, for example, you might have a lower RMS. So really focus more on the peak there and just make sure that you're nowhere near zero. Typically with something like a drum, I just aim for about negative six on my peak meter. And that usually keeps me in the right ballpark. But for things like a guitar or vocals, we want to be aiming for something like negative 20. So if we go down to this vocal here, for example, Let's look at what this vocal is doing in this section. We'll pull up our level meter. We'll switch it to peak and RMS. And let's listen to this vocal. So we can see there negative 7.5 on the peak, so we're safely away from zero. You're fine as long as you don't hit zero. So I usually try to test it and get as loud as I can. And if I get close to zero, I'll turn it down. But usually I let myself get up to about negative three on the high end of things. But we're really looking for this RMS number and that's sitting around negative 20, which is a good kind of golden sweet spot here on these vocals. Now, the last thing you might be thinking, well, that's great. He's kind of belting here, but what about in a quieter section? What about a section like this? Do I need to automate the volume up? How am I gonna fix that? Well, in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna show you a way that you can fix it in Logic in just a couple of seconds. But also don't worry that some performance are just gonna be dynamic. It's okay if you have a quieter section and then a louder section if it sounds right, if it feels right. But if it's quieter here and you need it to be louder and it's louder here and you need it to be quieter, then we're gonna balance that in tomorrow's video without using automation. I'm gonna show you a better technique than automation for that. But that's for tomorrow. In the meantime, if you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix, it's really gonna help you out. It goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them completely free. There's a link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. And in the meantime, I'd love to hear from you. Have you heard this explanation of how loud you should record before, let me know in the comments below. This was never explained to me this clearly, so I'm really excited to be able to give this to you because just knowing that you're recording at safe levels, I find to be very, very comforting. Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another five-minute logic expert. One